decomposing gloves here and today you guessed it we're talking about noise floor and quantization noise correlated noise and uncorrelated noise in dynamic range so you should know what quantization is you should know what quantization error is and what is dynamic range let's start there so dynamic range is the softest you can record and the loudest you can record and that's your dynamic range so what does that have to do with quantization error? Well, we know that the amplitude range has sort of been defined by this thing called bit depth, but we know that because of little bit converters, this is a little skewed and weird and stuff, but we're going to ignore our little bit converters and just sort of chug along. And if I say things that relate to that, I'll make it clear. So when we quantize something and things get shifted to a value, we create a noise floor. And that's all that happens. It's not like our signal gets distorted in some weird way. It's simply a noise floor because it happens randomly. The quantization error happens randomly. And so when these changes happen randomly, we introduce low level signals that are just random. And as a result, it sounds like white noise to us. It's in fact, it is white noise to a great, a great respect in the way it behaves, the way it's generated, just the whole, the whole nine yards. However, if quantization error is not random, and there's a number of ways this can happen, you end up with distortion. So distortion means certain frequencies are, are definitely receiving attention. They get more, they're louder. So you don't want that. You want things to be random. This becomes very important when we get into dithering. Why do we want things to be random? Why don't we want things to be correlated? Well, that has to do with the noise floor. So the noise floor is the, the softest thing. So in an analog land, it would be the tape hiss and the mechanical noise and in a room, if you're standing in a room, it's, you know, the dog barking in the background. And it's the lowest point you can record in a system. You cannot record softer than that. That's your noise floor. Digital systems have an exceptionally no, low, low noise floor because of this. This is a very good thing for you. It's something that analog suffers from because every time you run something through a wire, it adds a little bit of noise. Now, we get our noise differently, though. We get it from quantization error and stuff. So we'll... That's something you need to be aware of is this noise floor. So what is correlated versus uncorrelated noise? Well, correlated noise, like we just talked about, is actually a type of distortion. It's just quantization distortion. And it, it raises our noise floor substantially. And it creates patterns that are much easier to detect. And it's very likely to enter the threshold of human hearing. So it'll be loud enough that we can hear it. Uh, quantization, uh, but if it's decorrelated, our dynamic range is actually bigger. And there's a whole bunch of other things we could talk about here, but I just want to leave it at this sort of. But there are exceptions depending on how you do things. Decorrelated noise will be random, and so it will not be tied to our signal. So let's talk about the summing of correlated versus uncorrelated types of noise. So we know that it's random, so we'll actually get a noise floor that's all uniform. That's one thing I didn't say. It's uniform versus the distorted where we have certain frequencies that get attention. So we'll get an average low, lower level noise floor than the other one that would be correlated. So one more thing we need to take away from this is that our noise floor is more uniform when it's randomly randomly uh, spread out. And if it's distorted, it's not uniform. So it becomes much harder. Our noise floor rises substantially, let alone it's also distortion when it's correlated. So... How do you decorrelate it? Well, you randomize the last bit. It's called dithering. We're going to talk about that later. It happens all over the place in your DAW, and there's special types of dither, which we'll talk about later as well. But let's move on to the idea of summing signal. Let's say I have a signal A and a signal B. Signal A's got quantization error, and it's random, and it actually sounds like white noise. That's what it sounds like. Signal B has quantization error, and um, signal B's uh, noise floor is uncorrelated, meaning it's random from signal A's noise floor. When you sum them together, and let's say we're saying that these signals are similar signals. When you sum them together, the sum signal will increase while the noise floor being random will only increase by three decibels. The sum signal will increase by six. And so we actually increase our dynamic range when we do that, which is really great. Now, if they are correlated noises, so this signal and this signal have the same amount of noise, they both increase by the same amount and no increase is gained. If they are, because and now if the noise is correlated, but the signals are not, which is very common in recording setups, 
you could have something adding noise that's correlated, even though your signals are not. When your signals are added, they will only increase by three decibels. So when two signals that are uncorrelated are added, they'll increase in just three decibels. However, the noise being correlated will increase by six and your noise floor will go up, which is something you don't want. The ideal situation is you have uncorrelated noise floors because then if the signals are uncorrelated, but the noise floors are too, the dynamic range that you have available to yourself will be the same. However, if you have two signals and... And then if you have two signals that are correlated and their noise floors are not, then the sum signal will increase while the noise floor being random will only increase by three decibels. The sum signal will increase by six. And so we actually increase our dynamic range when we do that, which is really great. So how do you do this? It's done through dithering because, but it cannot be done. The big takeaway from this one is this cannot be done if your quantization error is the same on both signals. It's not truly random. So we need to find a way to randomize this so that when we sum stuff, we maintain our dynamic range or even maybe slightly increase it. So that is the takeaway from this. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Opposing worlds. Reversing.